Hey guys, it's K here. I have put together a global tier list as of March 23rd, 2018. This is, of course, according to the current meta. I'm not factoring in JP at all. I'm not factoring in future developments, really. Uh, the one small exception to that is maybe Lofia, because we're getting her job plus very, very soon. So I went ahead and factored that in. But other than that, this is just how things stand right now. So this is not about future proofing. This is not about... Um, you know, six months down the road, whatever. This is about right now. So um, before we start, just wanted to quickly explain the key. Uh, some units are going to have a border, a color border around them. And those colors correspond to whether they are free to play friendly, which is an orange border. White is a collab unit. Black is a whale unit, meaning that um, I would say more than 80% of the unit's potential needs is unlocked behind their job three. So until you get their job three, they're going to be a shell of what they really are so, supposed to be, be become. And then the blue refers to job plus available. And then green is simply that it's a free farmable unit during certain events. So why don't we go ahead and get right to it. Uh, the tiers are kind of self-explanatory. SS tier, of course, is the highest. Uh, I would say all the way down to B tier is usable and situational. Um, because sometimes, you know, for instance, a good example would be Veloz, who is a B tier unit, but in a certain event, because of his mobility, because of his skill set and his magic damage, he was a very good unit for that event. But other than that, um, you know, outside of those kind of special circumstances, they might not be the strongest. C tier is kind of like, a, okay, um, maybe if you have nothing else, you know, go ahead and use them. And then trash tier is under no circumstances would you want to build them up. So. All right, so let's go ahead and get right to it. We'll go with the dark units first. And SS tier, we have uh, we have my boy Kudenstein. The reason for that is because, um, first of all, if you get him up to job three, he has very high attack. He has a spear range, which is very usable and um, useful anyway. And then his leader skill is one of the top tier leader skills for dark units, which is a 50% physical attack leader skill. So. Uh, very good unit with a charge up. He can do massive amounts of damage and pretty good range as well. S tier, we have Albia, and she has an orange border because her job one is Machinist, which is probably where you want to use her. So she's very free to play friendly in that way. And she also has a good leader skill as well. She has the same leader skill that Kudenstein has. Um, but I don't think Machinists are quite to the level of SS tier where they can just dominate everything. Plus, she has a little bit of a low jewel count, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage for her because you do need to level her up before she can do like bombshell right away etc rosa is just very strong from her job two on she um, gets dragon cavalier and she has good stats and everything good mobility rada uh, i've mentioned her many times she has the potential to walk around as a um, shrine maiden but also have um, basic sage abilities as like her secondary and she can do lots of magic damage Dark Princess Yomi, she's a little bit of an anomaly. Um, she starts off as Ranger, which is a pretty good job, but then she also has the possibility to become a merchant later on, which can be useful in certain situations. So not really quite sure what to make of her. Her leader skill's okay for dark units, but it's um, mainly a missile buff. So um, I don't know. I, I debated whether or not to put her S tier or A tier. I'm not quite sure yet, but merchant is a good job. So I, I had to kind of respect that. A tier, um, you see that we have uh, Anastasia, and she's considered a whale unit because before her job three, she's really not that strong at all. Um, she has like Dark Knight and Crafter, which are not that good uh, on their own. We have Sabaretta, who is a free events unit that you can farm up, but this is a big caveat for him. This is considering that you have his dagger, which makes him very good. He's very mobile, and um, with the dagger, he can do a good AoE attack up to three times in a match, which is really good. And it also buffs his defense, so he's actually very um, uh, survivable as well. But without his dagger, I would say he's B tier or C tier. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind when you see this. Uh, Zahar, kind of the same thing as Anastasia. He needs his job three to be usable, really. Uh, I mean, his job two is not that bad, but um, I considered him a whale unit because that job three is so important. And the reason why he's A tier, um, some people kind of poo-poo on him a little bit, uh, might consider him B tier or lower, but I put him up in A tier because he has a good um, all-around leader skill, which is a 30% attack to slash type of uh, uh, characters or units. So that's a pretty good leader skill to have. Um, that's why I have him at A tier. 
beats here, we have uh, Mia, who is a mage who can also be very mobile as a ninja. Uh, pretty useful and good leader skill overall for magic teams. Um, Diaz is B tier because, uh, as Game pointed out to me, I mean, he has a good starting jewel count and he's able to do uh, like two Darkbringer skills. And, you know, that alone, without farming up further jewels, is very useful. Uh, and of course, he's green because he's a free farmable um, unit. And he's actually not an event unit. You can just farm him up throughout the story whenever you want. Um, and then we have Anna Rose, who I almost considered putting in C tier. Because, um, yeah, I did put her in my, like, underrated units list or whatever, but, you know, she doesn't have any uh, jobs that really leap off the page. But, I mean, Bishop is a very useful support job. You can't really put that below B tier at the current state of the meta. And also with Crafter, she has some good passives to make her a little bit more survivable. Plus, uh, as I mentioned before, if you put, like, basic magic on her or whatever, because of her element, which is dark, uh, and, you know, if she's a main Bishop then she's basically able to cover every single element in the game uh, because the spells already come with dark attached to them. You have light with the bishop um, attack spells, and then you have all the other elements throughout uh, with the basic mage abilities. So uh, I think she's pretty versatile, but I mean, not super strong or anything, but I definitely had to put her above someone like Mian. So that's why she's B tier. And there's nobody below that in... Um, the dark unit category keep in mind these are only units that go up to five stars um, and I left off everything below that because you really shouldn't be using anything below that so let's go over to the light column um, I'm sure you can kind of peek ahead already but yeah SS tier I had to put Suzuka up here she's just a nuke she has the potential to be ridiculously strong she also is very fragile, so that's why I kind of debated whether to have her up here. But again, what put her up here, um, put her over the top, was her leader skill. Um, with that 50% attack to all light units is a very useful leader skill. Uh, and on top of that, she's very strong and mobile. So her um, you know, squishiness kind of uh, threatened to bring her down, but I had to put her up here for now. S tier is Ryle because, um, again, Ranger is a pretty good job, but he also um, has the benefit of you know, being usable from job one, and he also has a good leader skill. He has one of those top tier leader skills that gives both attack and HP, so that's why he's a very good unit here. Uh, a tier, you have uh, Tierfing, who is freely farmable during the uh, Sacred Stone events. No, I'm sorry, um, Phantom of the Kill events. So whether or not she's going to come back, well, it remains to be seen, but um, she was freely farmable, and this is also keeping in mind that, you know, her her gear was pretty good as well and you know you can make her a level 85 tank and you know light unit tanks are pretty good cannon is up here because um she's very basic still right now but with her gurin blade she's um yeah just a very very solid uh light attacker and because of the dark resistance that she has she has really no glaring weaknesses as well that's one of the things with dark and light units that's kind of tricky is that they're kind of squishy to each other because you know of course they hit for extra against each other but with canon she doesn't have that problem freed is up here because um he's kind of a mini zangetsu i mean he has a dragon knight job with um the charge up ability from martial artists so you know it's hard to not give credit where credit is due there that's a, still a good amount of damage that he can do and pretty decent range as well then we have a whale unit here with Phrase because he does kind of need to get up to his job three to become a proper tank and all. Um, and then we have Victor, who is a job one tank, Holy Cavalier, which is rare, uh, which is why he has the orange border. But, um, you know, he doesn't really have a whole lot of upside either. But, I mean, tanks are useful um, in certain situations, and he's a very accessible one. Then we have Miliki, who... Um, Maybe I should have considered a whale unit, but, you know, she has some good support jobs as well. Bishop Enchanter, and uh, with that um, swift cast and everything, she's able to be a very effective healer and support. So um, that's why I have her up here. Logi and Chloe are on B tier. I do think Logi is better because he has better starting jewels. But um, Chloe has the better job overall when you get her up to job three, Holy Cavalier. So it's kind of a wash, but it's kind of hard to get her up there and... Uh, until you get her to that job, her starting jewels are kind of a problem, and she doesn't really farm them up very well. C tier is uh, D cell, I think that's what his name is, and he has a couple of decent um, 
Mm, basic jobs, but nothing really special. No trash tier units in the light column. So with fire units, SS tier, we have my girl Dorothea. She is possibly one of the strongest units in the game. She has no weaknesses really, unless you're up against somebody who has very high resistance to dark uh, because her, her attacks have dark attached to it. But she has good HP, she has good defense, she has good mobility, good speed, good range, good AOE, um, good attack. I mean, there's really nothing to com complain about with her, so that's why she's a no-brainer SS tier. She has a good leader skill as well. Uh, Sakura's up here because she's very similar to Dorothea, actually. Blade Master's a very good job. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't really have to explain too much about her. Blade Master is like the it job right now. Shakina is, um, I almost put the whale border around her, but you know, she is technically usable at, uh, with her ranger job as well. So, um, and she's also a collab unit with the white border, which is the Phantom of the Kill indicator. So, um, yeah, I should have done that for Tearfing actually, but yeah, she's um, pretty usable, job one, job two, but job three is where she really shines, where she gets Holy Brawler, and any fire Holy Brawler is going to be very useful. Um, and, you know, there's still that potential to use her as a ranger with sharpening focus and, you know, do a lot of range damage that way. So that's why she's a top tier unit. Good leader skill as well. Eve is a whale unit because, uh, I mean, she's a bride and uh, chronomancer at job one and two. But at job three, of course, she gets holy brawler. So she becomes very much like Shayna at job three, where she has a holy brawler and the potential to use chronomancy if you want to. But until then, she's um, just kind of so-so, and her leader skill's okay. It's like 30% um, attack, but not as good as the others above her, but um, still pretty good. Zengetsu, of course, is up there because he is like the biggest nuke in the game, potentially. He has um, crazy damage. Um, he's just very slow, so he does need proper support, but it's hard to deny his power, his raw power, so that's why he's a top-tier unit. Below that is S-tier. I have Hazel because she's a job one machinist, and of course that's why she has the orange border. Um, Courage next to her has an orange border as well because she's a job one sniper. She doesn't really have a whole lot of upside after that, really, but um, right now snipers are still very strong and very solid, so it's kind of like hard to put them below S tier right now. Then we have Mazumune, who was a free farmable unit, um, very, very powerful. Um, was part of the Phantom of the Kill event as well. That's why she has the green border and the white border. And um, yeah, she could just potentially be a powerhouse. The way you build her, it kind of depends, but either way, she doesn't really have any big weaknesses. She doesn't have any um, good leader skill or anything like that, but uh, she's just a very solid, strong uh, DPS unit. Uh, I would argue almost SS tier, but not quite. And then we have Vettel, who is S tier. He's the strongest fire tank. Um, I almost put him in A tier because fire tank is um, not as good as it used to be, but he does have a good leader skill where he has that 30% attack to all you know the slashing types and everything. So that comes in handy, especially uh, like we recently saw in Arena. He was very useful as a leader there. And um, his HP is a little bit low until he gets that adjustment, but still a very solid tank. Below that in A tier, we have Raimi, who is a very... A uh, solid unit for now. Um, he has a top tier leader skill, 50% uh, attack to fire type un fire units, but uh, he's a little bit uh, hasn't reached his full potential yet. He has martial artist, which is really good, and he also has ninja, which in increases his mobility. But in the future, he's going to be like a top tier fire unit for sure. He's going to be like crazy good with Ma uh, blade master plus with charge up and all that. He's going to be unstoppable. For now, he's a tier, which is still pretty good. Chihaya is up here because she's a very good support. Dancer is a little bit weak right now, but um, even as a chronomancer, she uh, is a very fast chronomancer. And, you know, as a fire chronomancer, that's very useful to have, especially in mono teams. And, you know, if you want to have some fun with her, you can also make her a samurai if you want to. Um, Vargas is up here because he just has crazy high attack. He is probably one of the squishiest units in the game, uh, defense-wise. Um, his HP isn't that bad, but um, his attack kind of can make up for it in a lot of cases, because um, even if you're kind of like in a situation where you don't quite have enough of a certain element to fill out your team, you can bring him and he's able to uh, kill off-element 
um, bad matchups um, because of his high attack, so that kind of makes up for things. Um, but he do have to babysit him because he's going to die very easily, and he doesn't have like good jewels or anything. And then we have Melda, who's just a kind of solid all-around beast tamer, who also has um, the benefit of a samurai passive to make her hit extra hard. So just a very solid mobile character there. B tier, we have Catanova, because the poor guy hasn't really reached his full potential yet. Uh, the jumps just take too long, he's just too slow, he doesn't have enough range quite yet uh, overall. He has that little like single target thing, but um, overall he's just kind of struggling right now, but he will get buffed in the future for sure. Then we have Stry, who um, actually is, can be usable as like a magic swordsman with a thief, uh, move plus one, kind of usable there. Uh, she will also get better in the future. Uh, I think like a special thief job. And then we have uh, Veloz, who was recently freely farmable. Again, very mobile, um, and he has some decent attacks and, you know, nice AoE kind of stuff. Like Champagne Shot was very useful, and one of the events has magic damage. Um, and he's able to do water attacks, even as a fire unit, and uh, other kind of elements as well, like wind. So um, he's pretty versatile, but just his stats hold him back for sure. Then below that we have the C tier, we have Alu, who's kind of like a bard, but not a bard plus, no improvements there. We have Mian, who is a freely farmable bishop, but, um, you know, bishop and uh, you can use basic magic below that, kind of like Anne Rose, but she doesn't have as good stats because she's free. But, you know, I've seen some people use her at level 85 and she can be usable. Kagura is another free unit, um, part of the Sacred Stone side event story, but her first job or her first two jobs, I think, were just terrible, I think. Um, it's like all fire-based, and she doesn't really have the versatility she needs quite yet, but she will get a lot better in the future. Then the next unit, uh, I don't even know her name. That tells you how bad she is, but uh, I think she did have some kind of support class that was useful, maybe Bishop or something like that. Then... Um, you don't even want to touch these guys at the bottom. Um, don't even bother wasting a single apple on them. And then we have Water, uh, SS tier. We have, of course, Shayna. The reason she's up there, she's a no-brainer, is because she gets Holy Brawler from job one, but she also has one of the best leader skills, which is a 50% attack to Water units, so very hard to ding her on anything. And then in Arena, um, you know, you can put, like, basic Chronomancy as her secondary, and... Um, you know, they tend to use that pretty effectively. They will never use sharpening focus correctly, so don't even bother. So, um, yeah, Shayna is just good all around, of course. Then we have Forkus, who is, um, I've recently spotlighted actually this morning. She's up here because she has a pretty decent uh, leader skill, I guess, if you use uh, Lancer types. Like, in the future, we'll get Lamia's job plus, and then we can maybe make a team with Zangetsu or whatever. But um, really, her strength is that she's tanky she's um also a good damage dealer i mean she has over a thousand hp high defense but then she also has like mid 400s in attack and not only that she's able to do sharpening focus which is uh, a better version of charge up and then she's able to follow it up with a very good attack and her attacks also buff her defense and her resistances so she's just a great all-around unit doesn't really have weaknesses and then we have Lofia who is going to get her job plus very soon um, with her corner master job and she's just in my opinion the best support in the game because not only does she have good support jobs like corner master and enchanter but she has like um, divine shelter which is one of the best passives to keep her alive and then she also has swift charge uh, swift cast or whatever it's called which is also a great passive so she just has everything you need, and then her, um, she also has the, the character story unlocked where you can get her um, special passive, giving her further defense and um, like a regen and everything, so she's just extra sustainable as a support, so really, really great unit. Um, I've even seen her used as a magic swordsman plenty, so just seems to be always useful. Um, under that is S tier, which we, we have Feng Lu here, who has been useful uh, many times as well. We've seen him even take out Sabaretta EX and other events. Uh, if you're patient enough to figure out how to use him and use him properly and set him up, he can be a powerhouse with his uh, nuke, nukes and spells uh, and wide AoE. We have Reagan, who is, uh, of course, one of the original snipers and 
uh, he's actually still very useful because not only is water a good element, sniper is a good job, but uh, he also has, um, you know, chronomancy as a kind of like a side option, which comes in handy as well. Um, because, you know, cr being able to quicken is always going to be useful in those off turns when you can't really kill anything. So still a very solid unit um, ever since launch. Then we have Selena, who was a... Um, collab units from the Brave Frontier collab. She's really not uh, available anymore unless it comes back, but she is still the best tank in the game. She's clearly better than Vettel. Uh, again, Vettel is in the same tier only because of his leader skill, which is very useful. Selena has a pretty useful leader skill as well, which is 30% attack to water units, but uh, really she's just a really, really good tank and she's able to self heal and still dish out some pretty good damage as well. But she is slow, of course. Uh, and then we have Shen Mei, who is um, kind of noob friendly because her pirate job comes with job one. And really, it has kind of everything that you need, and she doesn't improve vastly with the other jobs that you unlock. I mean, you might get a good passive here or two, here and there, with like crafter or something like that. But overall, she gets most of the stuff that she needs from her very first job. Uh, she doesn't have the damage potential of some of the other units that we've had recently, but you know, with her leader skill being so good, which is also a 50% uh, attack boost, and her pirate job just being an all-around great job, um, she's pretty solid and strong enough to be S tier. A tier, you have Michael with his job plus, professor plus job. He's the best professor right now, um, but it's quite, it's not quite enough to separate him from the rest of the pack. So as you can see, he's actually lumped together with two other professors, which was kind of unintentional. But um, yeah, he's fast. He has the best stats. But his poison um, thing is not as useful as um, you may think because he's too busy healing everybody or vaccinating. Elizabeth is uh, free-to-play friendly because... You know, she starts out with that professor job right away. She does get Chronomancer later on, but, you know, a professor is often a very good job on its own. And then you have Gain, who is um, a unit that a lot of people actually pulled, especially from the soft launch, when the free pulls with Zenny, uh, the Zenny pulls, I should say, were a lot cheaper. In fact, 10 times cheaper. So people farmed him up to a pretty uh, good amount to get professor unlocked. He also had like a Holy Knight job for some extra defense, but I think going forward he's going to be a little bit more rare because the Zenny pulls are so much more expensive now and people aren't really going to pull um, that much of him. But he is good enough to be up here. Below that in the B tier we have Lamia, who um, is going to be a lot better um, in the near future, but for now she's still stuck with fairly basic jobs like Dragon Knight and so forth. Mizuchi uh, has very good mobility uh, with thief and ninja passives and you know can get around and be useful in that way but really no good damage and very squishy overall so um fast but not much else uh let's see here so we have c tier which is rin and alexis i think uh, right now they have basic jobs and everything rin only has two jobs and i almost put her in the trash tier except for the fact that um i do think that i don't want to mislead people you should probably try to stock up on some of her shards because she will get uh, an improvement in the future and she'll be actually very decent. And then trash tier, we have Elaine because she just has all basic jobs and no real upside there. So um, yeah, I mean, basic jobs are useful early on, but past that, there's really no use for her and there's nothing really special about her. Moving on to the Thunder units, the only SS tier... Uh, unit we have is Karis, and that's because she is the first sniper plus, which makes her a little bit better than the other snipers, of course, stat wise, and her XL shot is pretty good, or XL bullet, whatever it's called. But also, she has um, probably one of the better leader skills for those snipers because uh, she can buff up missile attacks across the entire team. So that's why she's SS tier, but um, Thunder is kind of lacking overall currently. In S tier, we have Aruba, who is uh, free-to-play friendly because his main job, Merchant, is available from job one. He doesn't really need all the other stuff from job two and job three. I mean, if you get him up, he'll get better stats and everything, but yeah, you don't really need it. Magnus is very good from job two with his machinist job, of course. He was our original machinist for a while. Very, very solid units. Um, hard to say anything bad about him other than the fact that you know he also is not like overpowering either. 
We have Tiona and uh, Manzane, who are both very, very similar. One is a Valkyrie, one is a Power Axe or something like that. But um, they are both pretty much the same, where they um, are tanky units that can also do some attacks. So Manzane um, and Tiona both get Holy Cavalier um, later on in their job tree, I think job three. But really, the job one is where you want to use them. And um, they don't really dish out so much damage, but, you know, they're stable. And, you know, they, I think they have good leader skills as well. Lavatane is um, a very strong lightning unit, a thunder unit. She's actually very, very similar to Suzuka, uh, minus the samurai job. Instead of the samurai job, she has Dark Knight, which is not as good uh, for the passive. But, you know, even so, she's able to be very mobile and very um, high-powered, but she can also be very squishy. Um, so she's a little, she's like a notch below Suzuka. Suzuka was just as squishy as Lavatane, but Suzuka had the extra attack potential, whereas, um, and the better leader skill, whereas Lavatane um, doesn't have that. And then we have um, Lucretia, who has a very good leader skill for Thunder units. And if you get her all the way up to job three, I think she can dish out some magic damage that's pretty potent. And she has a good leader skill, but other than that, um, I don't. Uh, I don't really see her being used very often, but I do think that there's potential there. Um, and then we have, uh, under that, we have A tier, which is uh, Vincent alone, because job one, he has Sage, which we've come to find out is very useful. He doesn't have any um, upside beyond that, really, because his other jobs don't synergize very well, but he is free to play friendly because of that job one Sage. Um, B tier, we have Dilga who's actually fairly tanky and fairly solid. Anybody who has martial artists is already going to be pretty solid. Unfortunately, he doesn't have, like, Holy Cavalier. He has Holy Knight, which has really bad jewel problems. So, you know, if you were to use him as a Holy Knight, make him tanky, and then try to, like, charge up and do moves, you could do that, but he would run out of jewels very quickly. So um, that's his main downfall, but he is going to get a lot better in the future as well. Then we have the freely farmable Retzius, who has pretty good jobs, very mobile jobs like Beast Tamer or he can be a Twin Blade Swordsman, but he doesn't have any attack passives or you know really that much upside other than that. But for a free farmable unit in, a, in an element that doesn't have a lot of attackers or easily obtainable attackers, he can be useful for a good number of people, I think. Then you have, I think, Melee, uh, who has some support jobs. I think, um, actually, I'm going to have to look this one up because I don't quite remember, but um, I mean, a Thunder support is pretty good because of the um, there were certain times like during water stages where you'd want that Thunder to, you know, survive better because, you know, of course, uh, supports are already squishy on their own. So she does have the Bishop. Um, is it a she or a guy? I never know with this game, but this uh, character does have Bishop as a job three. So, you know, and then you can do like a sub skill for basic magic if you wanted to. Then we have Edgar, who's the story character, who's freely farmable, of course. Um, he's not that strong, but he does have, you know, pretty decent range with his uh, double gunner jobs, essentially. And then we have Vanicus, who is um, who was pretty highly regarded early on because she was a mage that also had plus one move from the thief job. Because uh, that's one of the mage's biggest problems is that they they have two move. But with three move, it shows a lot more usable. And then, you know, she can get swift charge or swift cast as well from her enchanter job. But um, for now, I mean, mage is just becoming kind of underpowered. So she's going to get buffed up a lot in the future. But for now, she's uh, down here. C tier is uh, Magistos because he, I mean, yeah, you could use him as a bishop, I guess. But his other jobs don't really offer much and they don't really synergize that well together. Um... I guess you could argue that he could be kind of on the level of an Anne Rose, but he doesn't have the um, spell options that she does. He could be a bishop with crafter passives that would kind of keep him alive a little bit, but uh, overall he doesn't really bring anything interesting to the table. And then we have the trash tier units. Uh, I think Alfred and uh, what is this weird looking person called? I don't even know. So don't even bother with those. Finally, we have wind units, and this is kind of where it gets interesting for me. Um, so, at the top we have Sita, who I think right now is um, the best wind unit in the game. Again, kind of like a Dorothea, she has no weaknesses, um, although she doesn't... Um, 
No, scratch that. She does. I mean, once you get her pirate job, she has a little bit better mobility. Uh, she doesn't get stuck with that 3-1 like the Axe Warrior job does. But, yeah, she has good HP. She has good, pretty good defense. She has um, pretty good attack. She has range. She has AoE. Um, and she has charge up from martial artists. So she's just, yeah, all around great unit and a good leader skill as well with the HP and attack buff. Great unit that um, yeah, any team can benefit from having her. Then we have Rahu with her plus job, plus um, Chronomancer job. And she's a really great support, of course, because of that. She has like the best overclock in the game, uh, which is called mag Magical Activation, I think. But she is squishy, but as long as you can keep her safe, she's a great support. Uh, she can also be used as a bishop if you want her to, but um, if you do have her job plus, it's hard to uh, shy away from that Chronomancer plus job. Then, of course, we have our OG uh, Holy Brawlers, Lucian and Yomi, and um, you do need to get them up to job 3 for their full potential, but they are kind of usable before then, especially Lucian who can be used as like a beast tamer and um, you know charge up and everything as a sub skill so they're pretty good um, but as holy brawlers I mean holy brawlers are still very powerful right now S tier we have my boy Balt uh, who is a whale unit because until you get his job 3 passive um, he's kind of like a squishy unit who doesn't dish out that much damage to make up for it so, uh, yes, he can dodge and all that, but it's not, like, something you can fully rely on. But once you get up to um, job three, you get his overdrive passive. That's when his squishiness um, is compensated for with his good attack, and he's able to kill things um, before they can really kill him back. So that's why he becomes much better later on. I almost put him in SS tier because I just love him that much, but um, I think he is a slight notch below Holy Brawler status, so... That's why he's S tier, but he's like at the very top of the S tier. Then you have Elmira, who's one of the best snipers. Uh, she's very fast and, you know, has the potential to have extra range if you want her to, like with her sniper passive and her hunter passive. So there is that. You have Bashosen, who is a job one machinist, who, again, gets the orange border, free to play friendly because of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, machinists and snipers, they can only do so much unless they're like a... Karis or something, who's just a little bit better, but um, very, very solid ranged unit. You really can't complain with her. Again, we have an orange border unit uh, here, Seda, because her job one is very good. Um, very much like a ranger job, actually, but um, arguably a little bit better, and she's very fast, but um, yeah, kind of a rare unit, and um, I don't know if, how much upside she really has for now. Then we have the A-tier units. We have Flamel, who's um, not really a powerhouse in any way right now, but can just be a solid unit, you know, maybe a beast tamer with magic swordsman abilities for different elemental coverage, uh, divine shelter for, you know, a little bit of tankiness. So just kind of a solid uh, unit that doesn't really do anything exceptionally well for now, but pretty good. Then we have Poland, who is a Bard Plus, our only Bard Plus in the game, so that could be very useful. Can wipe out the lower enemies with one turn, and she can also buff up your team by pretty good percentages. Um, so yeah, can be worth uh, bringing to your team in certain cases where you need an extra bit of stats. Then we have um, Millis, who is uh, our free ranger right now. Um, yeah, she is definitely a notch below most natural rangers or regular rangers, but you know, she's still pretty decent, even as a free one. Her stats are not that bad. I mean, she is slow, uh, which is a big downside, but her attack is like a combined... Um, attack and dexterity combined is maybe 50 lower than like a real quote-unquote ranger, so it's still going to get the job done. It's just going to be a little bit worse, but it is free. Uh, and then we have Hazuki, who's a pretty solid support. You can use her as like an enchanter. You can use her as a professor. Um, so it's always good to have that kind of option you know across different elements and it's not like um it's not like rahu can do either one of those so yeah she kind of covers anything that rahu can't cover in the wind unit department and below that we have b tier uh Celine, who is basically like a mini rahu um she is five star capable now despite what the wiki says so she did get better um so again like rahu she has bishop and chronomancer although her chronomancer comes at job three so if you don't have Rahu, and for whatever reason you pulled a ton of Selene, she can be usable for you. 
We have Kazahaya, who is a um, pretty solid unit as a martial artist with some extra mobility from the Thief passive. If you are lacking in like Lucian or anything like that, but now that Lucian is freely farmable, um, you probably don't want to invest too much in Kazahaya, but for a, a long time he was actually a very good stand-in uh, as a wind unit there. We have no C tier, and then we have trash tier Regalt, because uh, I don't think anybody has ever used Regalt before. Uh, I actually need to look it up. He only has two jobs, which are Thief and Hunter, so both very low level jobs and nothing to bring to the table that's special. I don't even know why this person is in the game, but I guess some people need to be trashed here. So anyway, that is my tier list. Um, very curious to see what you guys have to say. I apologize that it doesn't look like super polished and professional, but that's how I roll. You guys know that. And let me know what you think, whether you agree with it or whether you um, totally disagree with something. If I, if I missed anything or if I totally got something wrong, let me know. But yeah, I, I'm glad I got it done. I just wanted to get it done before the weekend, before I get super busy again. And next week's a big question mark for me. So. That's it, the global tier list as it stands today, uh, and um, yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. Thank you again, game, for your help and your feedback, and um, yeah, comments away, guys. Peace.